now let us discuss about network layer design issues while designing the network layer the designer has to focus on four issues the first one is store and forward packet switching second one is services provided to the transport layer third one is implementation of connectionless service fourth one is implementation of connection oriented service first let's see about store and forward packet switching so here we have host h1 host h2 here host h1 is the source host whereas h2 is the destination host process p1 is running on host h1 process p2 is running on h2 let us assume that here the process is nothing but a gmail so here the our major aim is h1 wants to send an email to the h2 so p1 and p2 are nothing but some emails okay uh, here we have uh, a subnet this is nothing but a subnet a network or we can also call it as this as isp isp means internet service providers carrier equipment it may be any internet service provider it may be jio's uh, jio network or uh, it may be airtel or it may be any network so here we are using here our systems are h1 is the source system h2 is the destination system here this subnet is nothing but the corresponding uh, service providers uh, network okay uh, here first in order to send the message uh, h1 sends the here uh, in network layer uh, the message is represented in the form of uh, packets uh, so this is nothing but a packet uh, so here uh, this subnet contains uh, a collection of uh, routers here a b c d e are nothing but routers all these routers are connected by transmission lines so these are nothing but transmission lines or we can also call it as leased lines all are same only uh, here we have another router e uh, f so this f is not a part of the network so this f is this router f is outside the network and here h2 is connected over the lan so this is our example according to our requirement we can take the lan or directly also we can take okay so here h2 is connected over the lan okay uh, here in order to send the message in the form of packets so first h1 sends the packet to its nearest router that is a here a will wait until it receives the complete packet after receiving the packet it will stores the packet it will stores the packet so after storing the packet it will checks whether is there is any error or not uh, by calculating the checksum we know that checksum is nothing but uh, error detection mechanism if there are no errors then the corresponding packet will be forwarded to its nearest router so here two things are happening so a will wait for the complete packet so it will wait until it receives the complete packet so upon receiving the complete packet so what a router a will do it will stores the uh, it will stores that packet into the router's memory and it will checks whether is there are any errors or not by calculating the checksum if there are no errors then the router a will forwards the corresponding packet to its nearest router so here we are using uh, uh, this path we can also use this path also we can also send the packet via bde also but here we are uh, transmitting the packets via this path so store and forward so here now c has the packet so upon receiving the packet what router c will do router c will store the complete packet into the router's memory after storing the packet it will checks whether is there are any errors or not by calculating the checksum if there are no errors then the corresponding packet packet will be forwarded to its nearest router 
So likewise the packets uh, uh, will be forwarded to the routers until it gets H2. So here H2 is nothing but the corresponding destination host. So now here H1 is sending uh, some email. So that email is transmitted in the form of the packets. Now H2 got the packet. So here this router F is not a part of the subnet. Okay. Uh, so this is nothing but first service. Router will store the packet and it will forwards the corresponding packet until the corresponding packet reaches to the destination. So likewise the packet will be forwarded by router by router. So this is the first service. And the second service is services provided to the network layer. So we know that in OSI the last layer is physical layer. On top of the physical layer we have data link layer. On top of the data link layer we have network layer. On top of the network layer we have a transport layer. So here network layer uh, receives services from the data link layer and it provides services to its upper layer that is nothing but transport layer. So the second design issue is services provided to the transport layer. Here we have uh, three services. So we need to remember these three points. Okay. The first service is the services should be independent of the router technology. So here all the services should be independent of the router technology. Okay. And the second service is the transport layer should be shielded from the number, type and topology of the routers present. So here uh, shielded means it should be hidden. So the services provided to the transport layer should be hidden from the corresponding number and the type of the topology, type and topology of the routers that are present. So it should be hidden. Okay. And the last service is the network addresses made available to the transport layer should use a uniform number across uniform numbering plan even across LANs and VANs. So irrespective of the LAN VAN means ISP provider. So irrespective of the uh, ISP provider. So it uses all the addresses uses same numbering plan. So this is nothing but uh, services provided to the transport layer. So we have to remember these three points. Now let us see about uh, the third design issue that is uh, implementation of uh, connectionless service. So here also we are using the same diagram just like the first design issue that is uh, uh, store and forward packet switching. Uh, host 1 wants to send a message to the host 2. Uh, let us assume that it is a large message. So that message is split into four packets. So initially host 1 send the corresponding packet to its nearest router that is A. So here we are using connectionless service. Connectionless service means there is no connection between the source and destination. So here the router A can send the packet in any way. It can send the packet via router C or via router B also. So for that every router will maintains a router table, a routing table. So this is nothing but routing table of A initially. So here router A can transmit the packet to A to itself B, C, D, E, F. So here A to A. So here the second line the second column represents line. So line means which line it is using. That is that means via which router it is transmitting the packet. So router A to router, router A. So there is no need of any transmission. So that's why just we have used a hyphen symbol. Next A to B. A to B means uh, uh, here it uses B, B line only, router B only. So that's why here the line represents, the second column represents B only. Next A to C, so directly it uses C line only, this line only, this router only. So C, next A to D, so it can transmit the packet via B or via C also. Here if you, if you see here, so here router A is transmitting the packet via B, via B. So router A is transmitting the packet to D via B, via B. So via which router? Via B router. Next, router A can transmit the packet to E via B or via C also. Here it is transmitting the packet to E via C. So likewise to F via C. Okay. So this is nothing but initial stages. 
so if you observe here so here router a transmits initially first packet to router c next router e next router f so yet router f we have first packet yet router e we have second packet next this is nothing but third packet okay uh, here what will happen is uh, uh, the routing tables will be updated periodically so let us assume that uh, here uh, here router a transmitted three packets in this direction so router a feels that uh, there is a too much of congestion there is a too much of traffic via this path so that's why router a transmitted the packet uh, router a transmitted the fourth packet via b router so that's why the routing table for the a is updated if you see here this is nothing but routing router a table later so routing tables are updated periodically based upon the congestion based upon the traffic so here if we observe here the first four are same only a hyphen b b c c d d b the first four are same only but router a is transmitting the packet to e via b initially transmitted the packet to e via c one two three packets are transmitted via c only but here now in order to transmit fourth packet to router d it is router e router e it is using via b likewise in order to transmit the packet to f f router a is using b so we can say that router table routing tables are updated periodically okay so likewise this is nothing but routing table of c so c is transmitting a directly so c is transmitting the packet to b via a next c to c means dash c to d c to d so it is transmitting c uh, router c is transmitting packet to d via e so likewise it is transmitting packet to e and f via d likewise this is nothing but routing table for e okay uh, so this is about implementation of the connectionless service so connectionless means there is no connection between the source and destination here the packets in the connectionless network are called as datagrams so if we use a packet in the connectionless service then the corresponding packets are called as datagrams and this network can be called as datagram network the subnet or isp carriers equipment can be called as datagram network okay now uh, let us see about uh, the fourth design issue that is uh, implementation of uh, connection oriented service so connection oriented means there should be a connection between the source host and uh, destination host so before transmitting the packets that connection will be set up after the connection only the source host will transmit the packets via the corresponding path that connection is called as a virtual circuit so via the circuit only the packets will be transmitted here uh, uh, a connection will be set up from the host 1 to host 2 via this path so via this path only the packets will be transmitted and this connection is called as virtual circuit here let we have two processes host 1 on h1 host process p1 is running and we have one more host that is host h3 on h3 process p3 is running so here both the host h1 and h3 are connected to, to the nearest router that is a let us assume that host h1 as well as host h3 wants to transmit a packet simultaneously to the corresponding destination host via the virtual circuit so for that we know that every router will maintains a routing table so here h1 and h3 will transmits the packet to its nearest router that is router a so this is nothing but routing table for a this is router routing table c this is routing table e here the routing table is splitted into two parts so this is nothing but uh, incoming path and this is nothing but outgoing path so it specifies that if router a receives a packet from h1 host then it is giving a number called 1 so this is called as connection identifier so this number is called as connection identifier so if it is if router a 
receives a packet from H1, it is giving a number, a connection identifier called 1 and the corresponding packet will be transmitted to router C. So, what is the connection identifier? 1 is the connection identifier. So, this is nothing but incoming part, this is nothing but outgoing part. So, router A is transmitting the packet to C with the connection identifier 1. Next, if router A receives a packet from H3, H3 here also connection identifier is 1. Why? Because router A is directly connected with H1 and H3. H3. So, that's why identifier number is given as input identifier. This connection identifier is given as 1. If router A receives a packet from H3, it will transmit the packet to router C. Why? Because via this path, the circuit is set up. The virtual circuit is set up. So, router A is transmitting the packet to C. But here, the output connection number, the output connection identifier is given as 2. So, this 2 specifies that uh, it is the packet from H3. Next, let us see about uh, routing table C. Uh, here, if router A, if router C receives a packet from router A with the connection identifier 1, then what the router C will do? Router C will transmit the packet to router E with the connection identifier number 1. So, likewise, if router C receives a packet from router A with the connection identifier 2, that means it is a H2 packet, H3 packet. So, that packet will be transmitted to router E with connection identifier 2. So, likewise, we have router E routing table also. If router E receives a packet from C with connection identifier 1, it will be transmitted to F with the identifier 1. Next, C2. If router E receives a packet from C with the connection identifier 2, it will be transmitted to F with connection identifier 2. So, these are the four design issues of uh, network layer. First one is uh, store and forward packet switching. Second one is uh, services provided to the transport layer. Third one is uh, implementation of connectionless service. In connectionless service, the packets are called as datagrams. Fourth one is implementation of the connection oriented service. Here, there should be a connection, uh, that connection, that path is called as virtual circuit. 